let's uh, talk about this. Vince McMahon is recovering from surgery. According to a report from TMZ, the 77-year-old had major surgery to correct an issue with his spine. The specific nature of McMahon's spinal issue is not clear, but the surgery was ultimately deemed a success. There is no timetable for his recovery. The procedure is believed to have lasted over four hours. Our own Dave Meltzer addressed McMahon's influence on recent WWE programming in the latest edition of The Observer. <clears throat> I still got that deep gunk. That's the worst. Pal. Meltzer noted that the recent string of nicknames used on air, such as Big Bronson Reed and Dirty Dom, is a directive coming from the chairman himself. Dirty. It was confirmed all the alternative nicknames, alliterative, Dave wrote, were a directive from Vince. Apex we, we really had to be told that? Of course well, it was. You know. It wasn't pushed nearly as hard on SmackDown. It looks like it was an idea he had, and he gave up on it afterwards. See, here's the thing. You think I mind Dirty Dom? I think it's great. Well, yes. But uh, what I do mind is when I have to hear it 85 times on a show. Well. If you want to give somebody a nickname... Like, that's cool. But, dude, how many times? I got it. His nickname is Dirty Dom. You literally have to tell me, like, once or twice. Although, to be fair, you know, I've heard uh, the the resident mean girl 888 times, and I still wrote the resident bad girl. Probably because <laughs> I zone it out because it's so stupid. But, anyway, he's given up on it. Thank God. I hope they don't I get mean, rid of Big Bronson Reed. Well, he should be Big Bronson Reed. I mean, he it is. actually fits him. It's perfect. Same thing with Dirty Dom right now and this whole deal you got going on. It's just when they add in the, again, it's like Michael Cole screaming out Apex Predator or screaming out whatever. It's like, no, you know, it doesn't have to be that contrived. Yes, you beat it into your, you know, everybody's heads that that's, you know, what it is. That's who they are. So you get some sort of Pavlovian response out of it. But still, it's done way too much. Or it says, so Vince is still making suggestions. Yeah. Yes. It's so is company. Paul. Yeah. So are a lot of people. So is so is the USA Network. When they wanted that 24-7 title, remember that stupid 24-7 title that USA yes. Network demanded? No one said they were writing the show. Mm-hmm. They made a suggestion. Because there's one guy writing the show right now, and it's Triple H. The and he has TV. help. Yeah. He has help. He has uh, input from Minnie. You think, you think the bloodline is a Triple H storyline or a Vince storyline? It's not. It's a Paul storyline. Paul Heyman, yeah. yeah. Look, and Adam Pierce is there. It's not like he doesn't have any experience at all in the wrestling business. And you look at all the other minds they have, and no, they may, are they in the writer's room? No, they're not. But do they help shape things and, and design what you see on TV? Yes, they do. So, look, Vince McMahon is never not going to have a say in his fingers in that company it's his company he's vince mcmahon we know what his mo is we saw it we saw him leave and then force his way back in and actually benefit from that even more with this deal with endeavor and we've already heard ari emmanuel say i'm never going to step in vince's way and we've seen what dana's been able to get away with and you see how he operates until the man is dead, and even when that happens, I'm still not sure he won't reach his hand out from the ground and try to have some sort of say in how that company's run. He's always going to. But, as we've tried to tell everybody over time, this is Paul Heyman's, I'm sorry, this is Paul Levesque's show. This is Triple H's show with the other people, Kevin Dunn, Paul Heyman, and everybody else that's involved in it. I love these people that are like, we don't need to call him Big Bronson Reed. We can see he's big. Okay, well, we shouldn't have called him Hulk Hogan because we can see he's a Hulk. Should have just called him Hogan and Boss Man. We don't need to call him Big Boss Man. He's obviously big. Chris Bundy instead of King Hogan. We'll just call him Bill Morrissey. That's going to get the guy over. The show? You know, they should call him as Big Ass Bill Morrissey. I've been advocating that one for a long time. He'd be twice as over if they called him Big Ass Bill Morrissey. Instead of Big Bill. But huh. such is life. Co-sign that. It's pro wrestling, everybody. Crying out loud. Cartoon characters here. Let's see here. SummerSlam and AEW all in. Dave Meltzer provided updates in The Observer. SummerSlam, 45,971 tickets are out. They announced Roman Reigns, Jey Uso stipulations, and they moved a bunch of tickets. It is a virtual lock that it will be the most number of people watching in North America or any SummerSlam in history. 
Second largest attendance. Largest gate for any non-WrestleMania show ever in the U.S. And uh, looks like they're targeting like a $7.3 million gate. Oof. Holy smokes. <laughs> now, uh, All In, also doing very well. 76929 That's how many tickets are out. 70000 paid. So they need uh, 12000 paid, which is why I advocated get a card out as soon as humanly possible. I know you can wait. I know they have waited. I know they've still sold the tickets. I know they'll still sell a ton of pay-per-views if they announce the whole card in the last day. But it is an international show. And if Mike were on the fence right now, am I going to go or not? Well, he's got to get a flight. He's got to get a hotel. He's got to get all that. And if he's going to make his decision based on what's going to be on the show, then if you wait another week or two, he ain't going. So the earlier you can get the card out for this show, the better. The there first are. thing I would need is the State Department to change their mind on some things. But after that, yeah, actually, you're right. We need at least one match that should have been hyped up at this point. And I guess, you know, we can shoehorn in this right now that Jamie Hayter, I guess, sounds like she is going to be missing all in, which is really disappointing. You still have big matches. You always have Mercedes Monet out there. You could always do something like actually, that. Actually, we don't know that. Her foot. Uh, well, that's true, yeah. So let's just say Julia then in that case. You could try to bring in a, a big name, but you do have Tony Storm against Britt Baker is probably going to be your 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 most important women's match on there now that Jamie Hayter won't be. So it looks like the largest recorded attendance in history, aside from the New Japan shows in North Korea, which were not paid attendance, it is number five all time. When it comes to attendance at actual paying shows, and the WrestleMania 3 mark is probably a week to 10 days away from being broken. And with a month left, the 80,709 total looks like it's being broken. The actual all-time paid is certainly possible, but far from a sure thing. There are 10,896 tickets left. The potential looks to be 87,825. So let's see what happens. I just need something to do 93,176 people. Last night's episode of Dynamite, 898. This is third, This is Wednesday's show. Did we talk about this yesterday? We didn't. 898,000, down 6% from the previous week. 0.29 and 18 to 49, down 15%. And obviously, there was uh, the World Cup, Women's World Cup. Did a 1.20 in 18 to 49. Dynamite beat everything else on network television. They are down 8% year over year, 12%, 18 to 49 year over year. And uh, obviously it was going to be down after blood and guts, but uh, numbers are fine. 898, it's a good number, 0.29. I'm blown away by the Women's World Cup number. Not because it's, you know, women or anything like that, but like the Women's World Cup, one point, it just blows my mind for how small soccer is here on a professional level. It always blows me away of what these numbers are now when it comes to it. It's ridiculous. Figure skating would always be that thing, too, during the Olympics, where it would just blow my mind that people would go out of their way to the point that they do to make it such a big event. No, 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 everyone. Nobody said that Dom was, like, really good. He's fine. He's and he fine. has and he has had very good matches. Yes. The issue is saying that he is comically bad, which He's he is not. not. I oh. see people every week that are comically bad. I watch them every single week. Dominic is not one of them. No. Is he Eddie Guerrero? Of course not. No. Might be someday. I don't know. Probably not. Uh, probably but, not. But uh, he's not now. But you know what? He's not comically bad. And you know what? He doesn't have to be Rey Mysterio Jr. either. He just has to be the best Dominic Mysterio he can be. He looks more comfortable now than he's ever been. You know, he now knows a, a lot more about psychology for sure than he ever probably has before because he's actually in the thick of things right now working. So, hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers. 
at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.